The housing crisis in Ireland at the moment is a social catastrophe and it's also an economic one as well. We're seeing that, for example, schools can't find teachers in Dublin. Recently, we're hearing nurses are emigrating because they literally can't cover the rent. Rents are now the highest in the EU and we have this claim from government and our new Taoiseach that the, the grass isn't greener elsewhere, that you know things are bad everywhere, but they're not as bad as Ireland. The average rent now in Ireland is uh, 1,400 a month. If a nurse is trying to pay that, that would require two thirds of their basic um, income left after taxes. So basically the money they have each month, two thirds of it would be gone on trying to cover that rent. If they were trying to rent in Dublin, basically which we're now over 2,000 a month for the average rent in Dublin, that is their entire take home salary gone. So how can people be expected to live and get a home when their entire salary of an average worker, of an essential worker like a nurse is gone on rent? And the other side of the younger generations, the crisis is they're stuck at home because of the rents, because of lack of housing. We now have the biggest increase in the proportion of young adults who are living at home with their parents in the EU. We've seen it go from um, close to 30%, just a third of adults who are young adults aged 25 to 29 were living at home with their parents in 2004. That has now gone up to over two thirds, close to 65% of young adults living at home. Overall, between the ages of 20 and 35, um, 75 percent, that's three quarters of young adults are living at home with their parents. That is one of the highest in the EU. And we're also seeing now young people emigrate. And the crisis is getting so bad now. If we look at the government has been forced um, they didn't want to do this, but they were forced because of public pressure to put in place a eviction ban over the winter until March because we saw unprecedented numbers of people being evicted into homelessness, being evicted from their homes because landlords were selling up. And I see come March that that situation hasn't changed. There's no increase in supply. We're going to see a tsunami of evictions, of homelessness, if the government does not extend that eviction ban for at least two years because there's no prospect of supply coming on board before that. And we're hearing a lot of the conversation is about landlords, how are landlords surviving, how do we keep them in the market, but landlords have a home. These tenants, this is their home for renters. They have nowhere else to go. And in the past, it was seen that a lot of renters were like young professionals, students, they were there as a kind of transitory thing. But now 42% of renters, that's almost a half, are families with children. We have over 130,000 households with children um, in the private rental sector. They are living in a state of insecurity. This is a generation of children being brought up in insecure housing. Where are they supposed to go to if they are evicted um, in the spring of next year? There is nowhere to go to. There is nowhere they can afford to rent. I would ask the Taoiseach now, the new Taoiseach, to go spend and actually stay a few nights in emergency accommodation with families in hostels in Dublin. Actually stay a few nights and see what it's like. Or else stay somewhere and then stay somewhere and be evicted and try and find somewhere with an average income, try and find somewhere to rent. I think they actually need to be made experience the housing crisis for a while because I think they are so disconnected from the scale of suffering. I, I cannot see any other reason why we're failing to see emergency action such as the freezing of rents and the extension of the eviction ban. And, and an example of this is, you know, there, there's six billion euro they're putting into what they're calling a rainy day fund. And I, I cannot see how this is an absolute emergency right now. That six billion should be putting into, for example, buying up derelict property, refurbishing it, setting up a state construction company that would build homes, 
setting up modular factories that would build um, uh, housing on, on a prefabricated basis that you could do it quickly. Um, I think that what has happened is the government, to me, seem captured by the big interests who make a lot of money from property and housing in Ireland. The investor funds, particularly um, the large equity vulture vampire funds, the developers, the big developers, and the banks as well. Um, and they're really reluctant, and of course landlords, um, which we know of course government amongst the government is landlords. And so we hear constantly this thing of not wanting to intervene, uh, to do anything that would deter these investors um, from housing. And in actual fact, what they too should be doing and what we need to see is a change that puts the, the needs, the housing needs of people first. And, and this is the, the problem has been that housing policy for the last 30 years in Ireland has essentially been made in the interests of these various private property, construction, developer, investor fund, landlord interests. And that is why we've ended up here. The government is saying, okay, we're, you know, we're building social housing now, we're funding this, we're funding affordable housing, but it is only miniature in the scale of what's actually needed. And so it's like they're pointing to, you know, our house is on fire. It's like a house is on fire and, you know, the place is burning down and they have arrived with a few buckets of water and they're pouring them in one room, the buckets of water, and they're putting out the, the fire, let's say in the corner of the sitting room, and they're saying to everybody, look, 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 we've put out the fire in the corner of the sitting room, but the entire building is burning down. 